Hi everyone, so you all know since we've been bringing it up over the last few episodes that our new album is out today. It's an all Brahms album, in case you missed that, all three of his violin and piano sonatas. And since we're doing an all Brahms album, it seemed like the perfect opportunity to take a look at the sonatas and of course our own personal history with the music. Each of the three sonatas, Opus 78, Opus 100 and Opus 108, has a very different temperament and their own difficulties in execution. But maybe why this album is so special to us is because the third sonata is actually the first piece we ever played together. Apparently, playing music with your boyfriend is very frowned upon because you kind of ruin the relationship. Obviously, we made it through the Brahms, and 14 years later, we are still trying to ruin it. Now, Brahms, as I'm sure a lot of you know, was intensely self-critical of his music. He once claimed to have destroyed 20 string quartets before his official first quartet in 1873, and likewise, there are said to be as many as four violin sonatas before number one, the G major, Opus 78. Did you know, for instance, that there was a second violin concerto, numbers upon numbers of piano pieces? It's said that at the end of his life, he sat himself before the parlor stove, looking through old letters and manuscripts. Anything that was embarrassing, anything that took a blow at his self-worth was tossed into the fire. How many love letters to Clara Schumann ended in embers? There is something very human about this image. I can't tell you how many times I have listened or read or played something we created and just felt frustration or disgust. I'm sure many of you know that exact feeling. So much of Brahms' music was destroyed because he felt far from worthy, nowhere near the musical masters who preceded him. We're all thinking, no, no, it's not true, Mr. Brahms, but I will quote him here. As much as we men are above the creeping things of this earth, so these gods are above us. So, on the one hand, we can lament all the lost works of Brahms and wax poetic about their promised beauty, or we can trust that Brahms was exactly as self-critical as he needed to be, and now we have a clearer vision of his work and soul through the ruthless judgment of his parlor stove. Brahms, of course, may have been overzealous in destroying all of his works, but if some works were in fact mediocre, would not we have an entirely different image of him? But let's speak for a moment about the wonderful thing that is the three violin sonatas. All three, plus the violin concerto, were written for Josef Joachim, that behemoth of the violin. The first sonata we always felt to be rolling and turbid, uncertain and sprawling and for us probably the most difficult one. In fact, we actually had to record it twice, because we were unsatisfied with the first one. And the second was once my least favorite, but in learning it and working with it, there is such a singing, gently passionate clarity to it that just makes my heart pour out into my fingers. Now, it might just take the cake as my favorite one. And then, of course, there's a third. We were so excited to play this piece. The first time we touched it, we were 19 and 21 years old. And there was just so much excitement. Now, I have to tell you actually a little story that sidetracks a bit. But when we brought the third sonata to Holland for a summer music festival, we were asked to give an interview to a local paper to publicize the concert series. So how do you feel about this music about Brahms, the interviewer asked. And I eagerly cut over Ilya saying something to the effect of, well, Mr. So-and-so, this piece has such a romantic, brooding intensity to it and a lot of other very smart sounding things. In the course of the interview, he figured out that we were a couple, snapped a couple of cute photos of us, and that was that. 
until our host mom bemusedly slapped down the paper the next morning at the breakfast table and kind of cocked her head because the headline read burning romance with the cozy picture of us beneath it. So I was so mortified. I'm still mortified seeing that again today. I haven't looked at it for like a decade and I still detest giving live interviews. So Ilya now does the talking and I shut the hell up. Anyway, now it's time for Ilya to do the talking. Maybe why his music rings so true to us is besides his undeniable genius because of the way he lived his life. Our image when we think of Brahms is a man with fabulous whiskers and full beard, keen, penetrating eyes and soulful face. It wasn't until 1878, at the age of 45, that he changed his image, surprising his friends by growing a beard. In fact, he wrote to his friend, a conductor Bernard Schultz, I'm coming with a large beard. Prepare your wife for the most awful sight. But we tend to forget that he was also a young man once and had to have been born somewhere, in this case, in this house in Hamburg. The house is gone now, it was bombed in the war, but we had to include this picture because the first thing that I thought when I saw the photo was, that should not be standing. As a young man, he was already in love with Clara Schumann, who was 14 years older by his 20s. In fact, by age 21, Brahms was essentially living with Clara, acting as go-between with his friend and mentor Robert Schumann. Clara loved Robert, who was under care in a sanatorium until his death, but there is something heartbreaking and human in this mutual love and dependence that developed between Clara and young Brahms. It never came to any sort of union, and Brahms seemed to move on experimenting with romances with other young women. But as Brahms did write, they only promise heaven, while Clara showed it revealed to us. So that's probably all that we will say about Brahms today, even though I think we could fill a whole YouTube channel just talking about Brahms. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go give us a like, subscribe, and most importantly, remember to download our album of all three Brahms sonatas out today. We hope you will enjoy it as much as we have, the culmination of over a decade of work. So. Cheers, and until next time.